Hello and welcome to the E-Crystal Palace podcast. I'm Fonsa Greenborough and in today's podcast I'll be looking over the game against Wolves by bringing you my match review player rankings and my man and match. As well as this I'm also going to bring you interviews with Roy Hodgson, Jordan Ayew and Luka Milivojevic after the game. So let's begin. Jordan Ayew found the perfect time to net his first Palace goal as he sparked a late surge that saw Palace net twice to seal all three points against Wolves at Molyneux. The Ghanaian striker began 2019 with a bang as he produced a composed finish with three minutes remaining to edge his side towards victory in a tightly contested affair. And with the last kick of the game, Luka Milivojevic emphatically dispatched a penalty to seal another away win for Roy Hodgson's side. Despite the pre-match flames and fireworks, the game kicked off in freezing temperatures and it took a while to heat up with few moments of goal map action in the opening 25 minutes. The only early sparks came and Raul Jimenez saw a dipping attempt flush over from distance before Palace responded when Andros Townsend stole the ball of Willy Bolly to set up Milivojevic on the edge of the box who saw his effort tipped over by Rory Patricio. Townsend was then unable to trouble his Manchester City wonder strike in the goal of the season voting as he belted the ball high into the huddled masses behind the goal. But in 36 minutes, the host had a huge opportunity to take the lead with the encounter's first real chances. Ivan Cavallero's corner was met by the unmarked Bolly, who messed up his own attempt at a header. But the ball fell kindly to Matt Doherty to knock goal with himself, but the match winner from back in October couldn't find the net once again when well placed. Which was also the case in the final few seconds of the half, when Mumbly Sacco failed to turn home patch of an Allen free kick with his head from a tight angle. When play resumed, the shots continued to be wayward, and Johnny was the next player to fail to trouble the goalkeeper when he untidily shanked the ball into the crowd when he was picked out by a Doherty cutback. Followed by Ayu when he was sent rushing goalwards by Townsend through ball, but having been forced wide by Connor Cody, he did as well as he did to get a shot away, albeit well wide. But as the game snuck until the 80th minute, Palace began to look the more menacing and nearly conjured away to get in front, when Wilfred Zaha, Townsend and Cheku Kiate saw shots blocked during a goal math scramble. However, three minutes later, the Eagles did snatch the lead when Van Aanot saw a cross come short screwed perfectly into the path of Ayu, who took a touch before placing the ball into the net to net his first Eagles strike. With only a few minutes to see out to claim the win, Vicente Gaeta was called to his first save of the night in stoppage time when Ruben Neves saw a low drive head goalwards, but the shot stopper did well to beat the ball away to safety and keep his clean sheet. And that proved vital as moments later, Hodgson's team were awarded a penalty when Zaha was tripped in the box by Ryan Bennett and Milivojevic drove home from the spot kick to ensure that his team began the new year in the best way possible. So now I'm going to move on to the player ratings, but before I start, don't forget you can follow us on both Twitter and Facebook at Crystal Palace for all the latest Palace news. So if you are someone like myself who does like to follow various accounts on social media, all to do again about Palace and certainly of the news side of it and of course do follow both our Twitter and Facebook accounts because we do regularly update that with the latest news and especially during the transfer window where there's obviously going to be various rumours about players going in, players going to go out as well as obviously comments from you know Steve Parrish and Roy Hodgson regarding transfers if you are someone who wants another page to follow where you can get all of this latest Palace news and that is also including you know just general player interviews after game, general club news whether that be about tickets, whether that be about stadium development, whether that even be about the ladies or academy teams of course, if you do want another place to get all of this news, then of course you can follow us. And alongside our podcast, we also do have a few various people on the account who also post their opinion after the game. So if you are someone else who basically just wants to go on Twitter after the game, see what everyone's saying, of course I'd recommend you do follow us because we obviously regularly share our opinion on there. But also we do share our opinion of the lineups as well. So if you are someone who, even before the game, wants to see what people think about the lineup, what they think about players in the team, what sort of system we should play, and of course, obviously, follow us as well because it gives you another place to do so. Now, another great place to uh, share opinions is in the YouTube comments. So, if you are listening to the podcast on YouTube, then do feel free to drop a comment below the video with your player ratings where you rate the players' performances from 1 to 10, with, of course, 10 being the best. Now, one of the main reasons I want you to do that is just just so I can come back to the podcast and rather than just having my opinion of the game, how I thought the players performed, I can actually read the comment section and compare how you thought the players performed and of course that also, you know, 
what their sort of contribution to the game as well. So if you are someone who you know might have a different opinion to me or just wants to share it so that I can sort of compare my opinion to yours, then of course do feel free to do so in the comment section. And even if you are a Wolves fan, for example, do comment below with just your general views of the game. So what you thought about the goals you conceded, you know, would do you think that it was a bit sloppy that you gave away the penalty in the last minute? Do you think you could have defended better for our first goal or Ayu's goal? Or whether you do think maybe Wolves were just having an off day and Palace were just better on the day? Whichever way you look at the game, whether you're a Palace or a Wolves fan, if you don't want to comment below with your player ratings, then of course just comment below with your general views of the game. Now another reason for you to do that, aside from me just coming back to the video and just basically seeing uh, what you guys thought, it's just so any other fans who come to the video rather than them just listening to my views of the of the game they can actually read the comment section as well once again going back to that point so that everyone can get sort of a more broader view of the game itself and obviously of the performances of players as well but like i've said already it is a really great way for to get in discussions with people so if you are someone like myself who likes to have discussions with, with other fans whether that be about players performances whether that be about a team performance whether it be about the manager and formation whatever it is i do like to have discussions so once again feel free to share your um opinions and player ratings below in the comment section and also if you do have any questions or you disagree with anything that i've said in the podcast and of course also feel free to drop that below as well so if you do want to follow any of the social media pages that i've mentioned or join our facebook group then do check all the links that'll be in the description below so i'm now going to move on to the player ratings starting a goal with Vicente Gaeta who i'm going to give a seven overall now obviously Vicente is a player who i've given quite a lot of praise over the last sort of few few weeks or so obviously as he started to cement his place as the first team goalkeeper and certainly in the game here against Wolves even though he didn't necessarily have too much to do the fact that he performed well when he had to you know making important saves important catches as well as that one in like the 92nd minute which obviously kept us in the game kept us you know having that clean sheet the fact that he'd done that was of course great to see so of course over the last few weeks or so I'll be talking about you know Hennessy should he get his place back and I'm going actually Gaeta is in a good run of form so he obviously deserves to stay in the team and once again here against Wolves he, he further proved why he needs to stay as a first team goalkeeper because like I said once again it was a very solid performance from him now although I've given him a seven you know he didn't necessarily have to do much in the game and that's mainly down to the fact that Wolves were quite lackluster in their play so even though he made some good saves you know towards the end of the game where Wolves were trying to get back into the game aside from that it was fairly quiet from a Wolves perspective so actually he didn't actually have to do a great deal in the game so in that respect you could say you can't really rate him because he hasn't necessarily had to show anything but like I've said even though he didn't do much in the game when he was called upon the fact that he stood up and actually made it count by keeping that clean sheet was of course great to see and you know even though he didn't have anything to do goes back to that point the fact that he just made your decent regular saves which you expect any goalkeeper to make as well as you know dealing with crosses as well relatively well the fact that you do that even though when you're not really being tested by the opposition the fact that you can you know come forth and make a save or make a catch when when you're called upon as a and mainly because you're not going to be called upon much in the game so the fact that when the small times or the little times you do get uh you get these chances if you can deal with them well that's of course great to see and certainly he done exactly that now overall i would i would say it was a fairly comfortable evening for him mainly because he wasn't really tested that much and it just goes back to that point which of course throughout the whole podcast in terms of the defense and possibly the attack as well i suppose you could say to an extent because wolves were playing quite lackluster it basically meant there was a quite a comfortable afternoon for quite a lot of the team but like i've said already he had a few saves of note which of course i've already talked about but the fact that he was alert so late on in the game to actually uh, you know save that deflected shot from I think it was Ruben Nevers the fact that he saved it was obviously great in the first place but the fact that he saved it given the fact that it may had a huge deflection of Mamadou Sako that was the thing that made it even better because first shot he probably was you know positioned in the right place to save it and you know if he hadn't have taken a deflection he probably had it covered but the fact that it took the it or had a deflection off Mamadou Sako made it slightly more difficult so the fact that he was still able to you know position himself to get it despite there was a massive display, uh, deflection was of course great to see and you know like I've said it was in the 92nd minute the fact that he made that save kept us in the game and then what do we do we go up the other end and Wolf gets fouled and we obviously get the penalty to make it 2-0 so it just goes back to that fact that actually these can be sort of key moments in a game when a goalkeeper makes a save or when a defender makes a tackle and in this case here it was Fashenta who was really important albeit it was a save at his, at, his, um, at his near post yes obviously you would expect him to make that because you know, you know it took a deflection so of course there's a little bit less pace in it but nevertheless the fact that that actually kept us in the game and allowed us to go up the other end of the pitch and score that second goal to cement our fantastic win away from home was of course great to see but overall Vicente Gaeta you know didn't necessarily have to do much in the game and certainly 
other than that, a few routine saves and that one in the last uh, minute or so. Other than that, he didn't really have too much to do in the game. But what I've got to say is, you know, the main reason I've given him a 7 is because it's, you know, yet another clean sheet for him. And when you consider he's only conceded goals in his games, he's played for Palace in the Premier League against Chelsea and Man City really sort of goes to lengths to show how good he's been this season. So overall, for Shenta Gaeta, I think he does deserve the 7 I've given him. So I'm going to move on now to our first player in our defence, and that is of course the, the right back Aaron wan who I'm going to give a 7 overall. Now of course wan I talk about him week in week out, but once again a very good performance from him and you know it's something we've come to expect now, you know he, even though he's one of the, he's the youngest player in the squad, he actually seems to be one of the most experienced in terms of the way he plays and certainly against Wolves here, difficult opposition albeit they were a bit lacklustre in the game, so of course it was going to be quite difficult for him given the pace they have on the counter attack and how good they are going forward and the fact that wan dealt with them so well was of course great to see and certainly given the clean sheet and given the way how he defended against certain players in the Wolf side that's why I do think he does deserve the 7. Now of course like I've said already this season he's been absolutely fantastic and of course he impressed me once again and you know that's something that is really rare that he doesn't do you know it's very rare that he doesn't actually impress you but one of the main reasons why is just because he made a number of key tackles in the game and obviously just once again showing composure on the ball so obviously we know now his trademark tackling ability so of course that's what we saw in the game but actually the composure on the ball so the fact that he was actually able to do his defensive work but the fact that he was able to go forward and actually help the team go forward on the counter attack the fact that he was able to be a presence in that forward position who could carry the ball forward the fact that he'd done that was of course great to see so not only was he having a good defensive display by making tackles but actually that composure on the ball with getting balls into the box albeit not as much as previous games but the fact that he was actually looking to be a threat going forward was of course great to see and I suppose the word you could use was flawless because really I can't pick out anything from his performance that necessarily was bad because everything both defensively and offensively was really good. Now I suppose the only real negative from his performance and this only happened once in the game was quite early on in the second half and it was just a little bit of an error of judgment obviously he tried to shepherd, uh, shepherd the ball out and obviously lost out on it but aside from that, he had a very good defensive performance. And that really just goes to lengths to show how good he is defensively. And the fact that in all of his games for Palace, he rarely makes a mistake. And the mistake here didn't really cost us. So it really just goes to show that even though when he really plays well, yes, he may make the odd mistake here and there, but actually he doesn't really punish us. And the fact that he's got such a good recovery, certainly in a situation like that, obviously is to our advantage. Now, of course, I talked about already, you know, Wolves have a fantastic ability on the counter-attack and we've seen numerous times this season you know you look back at their game against Tottenham a few days ago that was absolutely fantastic you know the way how they 1-0 down go on to win 3-1 so they've obviously got that attacking threat but the fact that wan was there time and time and again to actually stop Wolves in their in their tracks basically stop all of their attacking moves and especially someone like Johnny in particular who I thought wan done superbly actually just man marking him the fact that he was there time and time again to stop these attacks and stop Wolves actually progressing into the box and actually basically restricting their chances in the game was of course great to see now I've talked already about Wolves you know have such a great attacking threat but you look back to the stats in the game and of course we're not the best in terms of going forward and you know that everyone that sort of knows that but the fact that we had more shots in this game here as opposed to how many Wolves had was of course you know great to see and it just goes sort of goes down to show how good our defense was and the fact that we kept the clean sheet but actually the fact that we limited Wolves so much that they actually had less shots than us albeit they were also good defensively but the fact that they had less shots than us really just goes lengths to show how well players like wan did and in particular someone like Johnny who I believe scored against us in the Sellers game this season in the 1-0 win for Wolves there so the fact that a player like him was actually dealt with by wan so well kept him out of the game and basically stopped one of Wolves uh, one of their sort of mainstays in the side was of course great to see now of course um one thing I did like about his performance, and I suppose this is one of the main reasons I've given him a 7, is just the fact that in terms of his positioning play, for the majority of the game, he was in uh, Wolves' third of the pitch as opposed to Palace's third. And albeit, you know, primarily he has to be a defender, so you'd expect him to play a majority of the game in Palace's half, but the fact that he was still able to do his defensive work whilst progressing into that sort of further, more advanced position in the box, in, in the Wolves area, and certainly inside the Wolves' box as well, was of course great to see. So the fact that he spent almost as much time in their third as he did in Palace's third really goes to show 
you know, how well he is defensively and the fact that he can actually go forward and recover from it, but also the fact that he's actually got like confidence and positional awareness to actually get forward as well. So I do think overall a seven is a fair result, you know, like I've said with Gaeta, the fact that he got a clean sheet was great. The fact that he dealt with Johnny in particular so well was of course great to see as well. But the main thing for me is the fact that his positional awareness by actually getting so far up the pitch was of course great to see. And the fact that he combined that with, you know, like he always does, you know, loads of key tackles. And of course the fact that he showed composure on the ball, given his you know, given his age, you know, you wouldn't expect him to be as good as he is on the ball. But the fact that he was composing the ball was one of the things that really did impress me. So I do think the right back, Aaron Wambasaka, I do think a seven overall is a fair result. So I'm now going to move on to the second player in our defence and the first centre back, James Tompkins, who I'm going to give a seven overall. Now, Tompkins is obviously one of our most consistent players this season. And much like Wambasaka in terms of his performances, we've just come to expect the norm from him. And this performance was no different in the fact that it was a very solid, competent defensive performance from him. And, you know, the fact that we got a clean sheet, you've got to give a bit of credit to him because I do think him and Sacco in particular done a fantastic job in terms of, you know, really nullifying that threat that Wolves do have. But in terms of just a few things in particular about Tompkins' performances that are, or the performance that was quite impressive, and certainly the reason I've given him a seven, is just the fact that the, the amount of important challenges he made throughout the game. And now, these are not just challenges, you know, stopping the counter-attack, but it may just be when we've got, a, or when Wolves have a chance in the box, the fact that he just sticks his foot in there, just either to make it difficult for the Wolves player to actually get a clean connection on it, or obviously to make that interception to actually get the ball away. So on them two sort of occasions, the fact that he done very well, well very well in that in them two instances to actually nullify that Wolves threat was of course great to see. Now when you consider, you know, like I've said already, against Tottenham Wolves were absolutely fantastic offensively and the fact that we kept their forwards relatively quiet throughout the game because people like Tompkins and Sacco dealt with them so well by making these challenges and these interceptions was of course great to see and because of them these guys being as solid and as compact as they were at the back basically meant that we kept them quiet for help throughout the whole game and you know when you consider they've got pace they've got creativity they've got everything you'd want from a forward line going forward so the fact that we were able to defend well and nullify that was of course great to see and like I've said already Tompkins was obviously involved in that but aside from his defensive performance which of course was brilliant the fact that he actually got involved in some more advanced positions was of course great to see and the one of the ways he was involved going forward was of course you know with the plethora of corners we did have throughout the game now of course i talked about it you know at the beginning of the week you know uh, you know, against Cardiff, against Chelsea, you know, Tompkins was actually getting involved uh, from corners and certainly, albeit not all of them were going in, but he was actually looking to find teammates as well. So, of course, this game was slightly different in the fact that, yes, he was still going up for corners, but this time, as opposed to putting it back into the box, he was actually looking to get on the end of it. Now, there was one in particular which just went wide um, at the back post. And obviously, that's a, a good example as to, yes, yes, it didn't actually go in, but actually it's a chance that he could have converted. So, it shows that actually... Yes, he can do his defensive work, but from a corner situation, he's got that headering ability to actually put chances in. So, albeit it was off target, and it obviously could have opened the score and made it 1-0 at that point, even though that was the case, the fact that he's actually getting into these positions from set pieces as well, especially from corners, because our corners haven't been great this season, so the fact that he was still able to do it in that situation, that was, of course, great to see. But overall, other than, other than both his you know defensive performance by putting in important challenges and the fact that he, offensively he was looking to get in the end of uh, corners, especially uh, in the set pieces. Of, aside from that, there isn't really too much more to say about him other than the fact that he was really crucial and really key to actually keeping Wolves quiet and basically getting us a clean sheet. So there isn't really much more I could add, but do comment below with your thoughts about his performance, you know, whether there was anything you think I've missed out. But overall, I think it was just a fairly simple, quiet performance from him in the fact that he just got on with his job, done it to a very high standard, and of course was quite crucial to us keeping a clean sheet. So overall, James Tonkins, I do think a 7 is a fair result. So I'm going to move on now to this second centre-back, and that is Mamadou Sakho, who, am I going to, who I am going to give sorry, an 8 overall. Now obviously, I could say much the same about most of our back four, and the fact that they were very competent defensively, done their job brilliantly, but for me, Sakho was the standout player of the back four, and certainly you could say the back five as well, you know, in terms of our defensive unit. Now one of the reasons why he was so great in this game here against Wolves is that, considering the pressure that Wolves had offensively, albeit it wasn't that great, the fact that he still had that calming presence at the back to actually you know, deal with all of their threats, you know, make these challenges, make tackles, make loads of interceptions. The fact that he was able to do that and do it so calmly was, of course, great to see. Now, one of the things I did like about that is that that sort of calming presence seemed to influence the whole side and especially the, the defence. So the fact that he was so calm and so confident with his defending skills, that sort of reflected on the whole back line. And that's, of course, great to see. So if you've got one player playing well, all of the other players around you will sort of get that sort of get that sort of presence or that feel for for the game and certainly i 
me in particular, I actually saw that in the game where actually, as the game went on, because he was so calm in the way he played, it seemed to help the players around him. Now, one of the other things I liked about his performance is the fact that he took control of quite a few occasions, and in particular when Wolves were on the attack. So the fact that he actually stood up, you know, basically put his body on the line by making challenges, making tackles. So the fact that he'd done that to take control of a few of the situations where Wolves did get forward was, of course, great to see. And like I've said already, you know, going back to that point I made about Wolves' threat, they're very good offensively. So the fact that Sacco, Tompkins, and the whole of the back four in particular done really well and actually dealt with Wolves threat was of course great to see. Now something I've seen a few people say on a few forums, few websites and obviously Twitter as well is obviously our change of formation. Now of course I've gone to talk about that when I talk about Wilfred Zaha in particular but in terms of the formation it actually had huge advantages for us going forward and obviously that's great because it meant that compared to the Chelsea game we were actually looking to go further forward and actually looking to have a go at the opposition rather than sitting back like we did against Chelsea so that was of course great to see but it obviously meant that our defence was a little bit more exposed on the counter-attack than it was uh, you know against Chelsea and obviously that's that's fine if you can deal with it so the fact that Sacco dealt with it so well and Tompkins as, uh, as well the fact that these guys dealt with the counter-attacks from Wolves so well given the fact that our defense was just pushing slightly further forward offensively you know it wasn't necessarily that that we were put under complete pressure because our defense was completely exposed it was just the fact that rather than having three players in the midfield in front of the back four we only had one saying like Luka or Milivojevic whoever was there at that time so rather than having a full or the full midfield in front of the back four we had one or two players as opposed to that so even though that left us more open a bit the fact that Sacco actually stood up and actually made himself count by actually basically stopping uh, Wolves counter-attacks was of course great to see and like I said already Wolves are so great offensively but the fact that whenever they did actually counter-attack with actual purpose so when they actually had a brilliant counter-attack the fact that Saka was there just to mop up and clear things up and because he was calm once again he could actually play the ball out from the back from that situation was of course great to see. Now, obviously, as a defensive unit himself, you know, I do think he was sort of the central figure in, in Palace's play. And obviously, defensively, he'd done that. He was the rock, winning headers, making blocks. So that was, of course, great to see. But the other situation in the game where he was a central figure was actually in our build-up play. And certainly, actually playing the ball out from the back, I thought he was quite key to that. Now, obviously... He, we know sometimes he can be a bit clumsy and lose the ball, but and some people just think that's why he's not actually a good defender. But actually, this was a performance once again where he he was very calm, didn't actually lose his head, and the fact that he was actually that central figure both defensively by, you know, doing really well to nullify Wolves for it, but the fact that he was also able to do that offensively by actually making moves from the back by actually driving the ball forward passing the ball out from the back so the fact that he was a central figure both defensively and offensively was of course great to see and there was one cross in particular where he literally ran up the uh I think, I think it was the left hand side or or, or some yeah it was either, either the left or right hand side but he's basically gone up the wing which you obviously you don't expect a, a defender to do and obviously he got into a crossing position crossed the ball into the area yes the cross was a bit rubbish but it just shows that actually the fact that he's actually got that intent and he, he actually wants to get forward. So the fact that he's got that determination to actually get the team forward is, of course, great to see. Obviously, it's not great seeing him actually run up the wing. But nevertheless, the fact that he's actually getting into or the fact that he's got that mentality to actually get the ball forward was, of course, great to see. But overall, you know, I was really impressed with his performance. And that's why I've given him the eight overall. The main thing for me is the fact that he was how calm he was at the back and the fact that he was able to deal with that threat that Wolves had and nullify it. And like I've said, considering we changed the formation, gave us a little bit less protection at the back, not completely exposed, but a little bit less. The fact that he dealt with that in particular so well and the fact that he obviously... Uh, combined so well with the other three defenders as well was of course great to see so I do think overall uh, a rightly deserved clean sheet for Mamadou Sacco and once again another solid performance from him and fully deserves the eight I've given him. So now I'm going to move on to the final player in our defence and that is of course the left back Patrick Vernano who I'm going to give a seven overall. Now in terms of his performance I suppose you could say it was a game of two halves in the fact that actually he was fairly quiet in the first half but actually in the second half where Palace were obviously pushing forward trying to get that obviously that first goal in the game and of course towards the end of the game actually go forth and get a second. So actually even though in the first half he was fairly quiet the fact that he actually came out in the second half even better was of course great to see and for that reason that's why I've given him a seven overall in the fact that actually when it did matter when we actually tried tried to actually get that first goal in the game the fact that he actually stood up made himself counted and actually looked to go forward was of course great to see and you know much like what has been a theme of quite a lot of his performances this season you know he's actually it was quite slow to start the game but actually grew into the game as it went on so rather than him just having a slightly average performance it just took him a bit of time to actually just to get into the game and when you consider Wolves you know they're normally a high press team 
lots of intensity and of course creativity going forward you can understand it may be taking a while to get used to it so of course on this occasion i'll give him a benefit of the doubt but one of the things i did like about his performance and even though in the first half he was fairly average the fact that even though that was the case the fact that he was still getting forward to provide that support down that left bank was of course great to see now of course in the second half it was even better and certainly in terms of us getting that first goal he was crucial to that but actually even though he was fairly quiet in the first half the, the fact that he was still trying to get up that left flank was of course great to see. Now in terms of two players in particular that he had to defend well against, they were both Doherty and Costa and I do think he dealt with them relatively well. Now you go back to the point I said earlier on about actually the fact that Wolves were quite lackluster and certainly they've got a great attack but it weren't that good on this occasion and one of the reasons for that is because Van Arnold, much like Wan-Bissaka dealt with one player on one side, Pancho Van Arnold had the task of dealing with players on the other side and I do think both Doherty and Costa really were quite restricted in what they could do in the game mainly because Vanano actually dealt with them really well and one of the main reasons he actually dealt with them so well is just because of his pace so in the last sort of few weeks or so you know go back to the Chelsea game I said that Vanano was bit, almost ball watching you know uh, for Kante's goal against Chelsea so the fact that he actually on this occasion rather than doing that he actually used his pace to his advantage which he didn't do in the Chelsea game so the fact that he'd done that to actually deal with Doherty and Costa was of course great to see and going back to his defensive play the fact that he was able to actually oh sorry go, go to his offensive play you know the fact that he was actually able to actually break forward on quite a lot of uh, occasions was of course great to see and you know going back to our offensive play the fact that he was just able to you know be that extra man available for a course or that extra man from a low lap so in recent games I've talked about the fact that yes he's been good defensively fairly competent but actually going forward he's lacked necessarily that sort of skill or that awareness to actually get forward unlike last season so the fact that in this game here against the Wolves the fact that he was able to do his defensive work so well and he was able to be that extra man going forward which obviously he's been missing in the last few games was of course great to see but just to go back to or, or to go to the right at the end of the game we saw 85th minute or so obviously we scored our first goal great strike by are you know great first touch and obviously an even better touch to actually get it away from the goalkeeper and finish so obviously that was great but actually the assist for that as well from Patrick Vanana was I would say it was good in the fact that it was a ball over the top literally it went up in the air and then dipped right down again but then on the other aspect, it was almost a lucky ball. He, uh, ball, you know, Vanano tried to hit it quite cleanly, but instead he sort of pinged the ball up in the air. So whichever way you look at it, it's an assist nevertheless, and obviously a great goal uh, followed by that to actually make it 1-0. So of course, the fact that he got the assist uh, for Ayu's goal was of course great to see. And going back to his performance overall, yes, he was, he was very good in the game, both defensively and offensively. So the fact that he actually got the assist to actually have something to show for his performance was, was of course great to see but you know even in the build-up to that he was involved you know him and Wilf passing the ball around Wilf obviously tried to get the cross in it's been blocked he tries to dribble past I think it's three Wolves defenders that didn't work so he passed the ball to Vanano he's obviously made that lovely chip dink pass to uh, Jordan O and of course IU obviously finished it with a great finish so the fact that he even though he was fairly quiet at the start of the game, the fact that by the end of the game, he was one of our best attacking options in the game by providing that extra support down that left-hand side, by actually just basically giving us another option going forward and another sort of, basically, variation of attack. So rather than us just having Wilf, Townsend and Ayu, we could actually have Vanana as well playing, you know, even more narrow, which allow Wilf to go even further wide and so they can do overlaps and things like that. So the fact that he was actually pro providing that... Uh, basically that attacking option whilst also being fairly good defensively as well was of course great to see and you know going back to the point which I've said for you know the four players I've already talked about once again quite cru very crucial to our clean sheet as well so of course you look at the stats we've now I think it's the fourth best in the whole league for clean sheets which really just goes to show how well this defense is doing as a whole and the fact that it's very settled seems to be playing into our hands so once again as a back four it was a very good defensive performance but individually Vanano both defensively and offensively that was good as well so I do think overall uh, seven is a fair result for Vanano and hopefully there'll be more performance performances like this to come in the next few weeks so now I'm going to move on to our first player in our midfield and our captain Luka Milivojevic who I'm going to give a seven overall now I did talk in quite a lot of depth about his performance against Chelsea and the fact that it was pretty average and that was just because of how well Chelsea were playing in midfield and basically that restricted him both defensively and offensively so that game against Chelsea was slightly disappointing in the fact that he didn't necessarily play as good as he'd done in the previous games but the f nevertheless the fact that he still tried to do something in that game was a thing that was quite impressive for me so I talked about it quite a lot against uh, in the Chelsea podcast and basically 
in this game here against Wolves, if Wolves had played like they normally did, then maybe it could have been a similar uh, sort of game in the fact that Lucas sort of was restricted in the game. But the fact that sort of Wolves, not necessarily down tools, but maybe the fact that they were just a bit fatigued, whatever it was, Wolves weren't playing as good as they normally do. And certainly Luca capitalised on that so much because obviously his performance in midfield was so good. So the fact that he had such a sort of lacklustre performance against Chelsea because of how good Chelsea were, the fact that he was able to come into this game here against Wolves only a few days later and perform as one of our better players in midfield was of course great to see. Now obviously I could talk all day about what he does defensively, tackles, blocks, as well as the fact that he was pinging balls forward as well. But the thing I really liked about his performance here against Wolves is just the fact that how well he marshaled the midfield. So of course as the captain you're always going to marshal the team, obviously making sure people know where they need to be, making sure that people are doing all the right thing. But actually the fact that he was marshalling the midfield itself, but the fact that he was being the architect of some of our good play, both defensively and offensively, and the fact that, especially offensively, the fact that he was involved in quite a lot of our good moves, particularly in that first half where we were obviously playing really, really well. That was, of course, great to see. Now, of course, I could talk like I did against Chelsea, the fact that his defensive work, as always, is obviously relatively good, and that was the case here against Wolves. But because Wolves were slight, slightly off the pace, it basically meant that he had that freedom to go slightly further forward, and actually a few of his good moments going forward were coming from him actually driving forward or from him actually pinging balls out wide. Now, of course... We look back at the Chelsea game, we really didn't have, really had any time on the ball. This game was slightly different in the fact that we had slightly more of the ball, albeit in the end Wolves had more possession than us. I, I think it was only one or two more percent. So even though against Chelsea we didn't have much of the ball, we had a lot more of the ball here against Wolves, albeit Wolves had slightly more. But the fact that he was still able to control the game in the middle of the park, even though you know Wolves offered a little bit of a threat, but not as much as they usually do, that was of course great to see. But I do think, like I've said already, one of the main reasons why Wolves weren't playing as good as they have been recently is probably just the fact that they were a bit tired, a bit fatigued, and the fact that, like all teams in the Premier League, the fact that they've played so many games in quick succession, and much like Palace, they don't really make that many changes, maybe that sort of played into, into our hands in the fact that, yes, we didn't make many changes, but nevertheless, we still came out you know, with a little bit more energy and obviously that more intent, that intensity to actually go forth and get something from the game. But like I've said already, normally Wolves like to have control of the game, but obviously in this game here, they didn't quite have it because they were obviously off the pace. And obviously Luca, much like a lot of players in the team, took full advantage of that. And the main reason, or the main way he did take full advantage of that, is just the fact that he concentrated on actually creating moves going forward rather than actually doing his defensive work. Now that's not to say he didn't do defensive work because he... He's certainly done that, and that's one of the reasons I've given him a 7. But the fact that Wolves weren't necessarily playing that great basically meant that he actually had more freedom to go forward. And obviously, in doing so, he was obviously creating chances going forward. So, even though it was mainly down to Wolves not playing well, obviously, Luca took advantage of that, which is, of course, good. And he obviously, you know, was proving to be a threat going forward, as well as, obviously, doing his defensive work. And even though he was looking to create stuff going forward, he still got a forward on a few occasions himself. You know, there was one chance early in the first half, I believe it was Jason MacArthur fed the ball to him on the edge of the area. He's obviously had a shot and he's forced Rui Patricio to make a save. So that's just a, a classic example of actually, yes, he can create stuff going forward, but actually if he finds himself on the edge of the area, of course he can shoot himself. Now, obviously in the first half and the first half of that second half, I thought he was relatively good. But in that sort of second half of the second half, bar the penalty he scored, he wasn't necessarily as effective. Not to say he was particularly bad, it's just the fact that sort of a game of two halves or the game of quarters in the fact that the sort of first three quarters of it were good but the final quarter weren't necessarily that great other than the penalty but nevertheless I do think the seven overall is a fair reflection and I suppose one of the only negatives or one of the reasons why his second half was less effective is just the fact that he got booked for stopping a Wolves attack now Percy for me I talked about it you know the Watford game uh, a few months back Basically, he didn't make a tackle and Watford went on to score. So the fact that he took one for the team here when Wolves were on the counter-attack was obviously good to see. And the fact that that sort of the um, five yellow card limit has now surpassed, obviously because we're midway through the season, that obviously means that this was his fifth yellow card, but he doesn't get suspended. So, of course, that was great to see. And, of course, sometimes you've got to take one for the team and exactly that was. But, obviously... If we had been a little bit more disciplined defensively, then maybe we wouldn't have had to make that sort of tackle if we'd had actually had someone back to actually deal with that sort of Wolves counter-attack in particular. Because I do think, looking back at the replays and looking back at the game myself, 
I'm thinking there was a, I think it was both Saka and Tompkins were back but then obviously Luca was trying to chase as well so we didn't necessarily have all of our players back to deal with it so of course on that occasion he obviously had to take one for the team but like I've said already even though his second half of the second half was slightly disappointing in the fact that he got booked he obviously tops off the game with what was a good solid performance with of course the penalty that he fired home and obviously Will, you know fantastic game he had obviously on the wing and I'll talk about him later but he's obviously run into the box got tackled or got tackled got fouled and obviously Lucas steps up for the penalty like he always does fantastically uh, well taken penalty in the fact that he's got that pace to get it past Patricio and the fact that he also got the height on it even though uh, Rue Patricio actually dived the right way the fact that he got the height on it as well to get it away from him was of course great to see so the fact that he fired it home in, pen in the, um, the penalty uh, home in injury time with all that pressure on him to finish the game 2-0 was of course great to see now obviously we know that he's very good at penalties so it was quite obvious that he was not going to miss but even so you know Rui Patricio is a good goalkeeper so the fact that you've managed to get a penalty past someone who's saved a few penalties this season was of course course great to see so overall Luka Milivojevic the captain a very good performance from him where he obviously marshaled the midfield controlling the game in terms of that midfield battle and the fact that he was in, involved defensively by obviously stopping Wolves counter-attacks as well as actually having some very good moments going forward particularly in that first half was of course great to see and of course he topped off what was a very good performance in midfield from the captain with of course the goal he scored to make it 2-0 so overall I do think Luka Milivojevic does deserve this seven I've given him. So I'm going to move on now to our second player, and that is Cheku Kiate, who I'm going to give a 7 overall. Now, um, I suppose I could say much the same uh, for Kiate as I have done for Lucra, in the fact that they were both very good in midfield, and in terms of winning that midfield battle, I thought they were quite crucial to that. But the thing I liked most about Kiate's performance, and this is something that, much like a, a lot of players in the side, it's something I've come to expect from him, it's just the fact that he always puts in a shift for the side in the midfield. So the fact that he's always got that tenacity and that physicality to, you know, do his defensive work whilst also carrying the ball forward so the fact that he put in a shift in the midfield was of course great to see now of course like he always does not uh, he obviously put in his duties defensively and when you consider the threat that Wolves do have on the counter-attack that was obviously very important to actually give that support to the back four so the fact that he'd done that and done his duties very efficiently was of course great to see as well and on the the plus side the fact that he was able to combine that with the fact that he was able to go forward in support of attacks as well was of course great to see so the fact that he much like wan I suppose albeit different positions the fact that wan and Kiate can combine both their defensive and offensive play get their positional play right so they're in the right place at the right time the fact that they can both do that is really an asset to the side because it, it really shows that we've got good transition in the fact that you can have a player playing defensively like Kiate like wan but then all of a sudden they can go forward so the fact that Kiate had a good performance in midfield where he was good both defensively and offensively was of course great to see now something I I've picked out from a few websites twitter and just what people are saying on forums as well is obviously the change of formation now of course i'll talk in a lot more detail about that when i go on to zaha because he's the main player who uh, obviously got changed in terms of his performance from this change of formation but obviously we were playing a 4-3-3 or 4-5-1 whichever way you look at it i think 4-3-3 is when we're attacking 4-5-1 is when we're defending which whichever way you look at the formation that really seemed to suit kiati in particular so of course we really um was, was his performance was really improved by this change of formation but Kiate in particular in the, in the midfield really seemed to help him and one of the main reasons for that is just because because he obviously stayed slightly further back he he was just marshalling the uh, the team and allowing other players to get more freedom so whilst he was obviously putting in a good shift that the reason his performance was so good is the fact that he let other players like MacArthur actually that ability to go forward and one of the main reasons why this formation of 4-3-3 does so well and why Kiyate in particular was improved so much from it it's just the fact that because you're playing free in midfield it basically means you can change between who's offensive who's defensive and that sort of fluidity between changing positions is of course great to see and that's something that really by playing this formation really improves our play and you know you look at the the fourth wave one against Chelsea because we were all playing quite quite deep quite narrow we couldn't really get anything from it but because we played a 4-3-3 when we were attacking uh, against Wolves here it gave people like Kiati that ability to not necessarily have to just play defensively but he had that freedom to go forward as well so actually and I do think it's a very fair point that people have picked out yes we always were calling for this formation to be played but when you see it in action and and see how efficiently it seems to improve our performances that's something that really is is quite impressive and I suppose the only thing we can do now is just pray that Roy Hodgson 
enjoyed it, the fact that we got the win and enjoyed the fact that this formation change seemed to help us and hopefully he can keep doing it because it gets the best out of all of our midfield players like I've said already, because Kiate could do his defensive work, that obviously allowed people like MacArthur to go further forward but then when MacArthur was coming back, it allowed Kiate to go further forward as well, so that sort of fluidity, like I said already, with that formation seems to really suit Kiate and obviously suits our midfield as well because rather than playing quite a narrow, even 4 4 2, rather than playing just quite a narrow, quite deep 4 4 2, with having that free in midfield as opposed to a 2 or a or as opposed to a five, just gives us that little bit more freedom midfield. And you know, Kiate in particular really did seem to, really, really did seem to improve his performance. So overall, check your Kiate here. I do think he does deserve a seven. And much like what I said with Milivojevic's performance before, put in a very great shift in midfield. You know, doing his defensive duties by getting back, making tackles, winning headers, and the fact that he also was able to go forward as well was, of course, great to see. But most, most, the I mean, the biggest thing I was really impressed with is the fact that how well he sort of adapted to that change of formation and how it helped him in his performance and the, the fact that it suits him really well really should be an eye-opener to Roy Hodgson to actually continue playing that formation going forward but do comment below with your thoughts about Kiara's performance but also comment below with your thoughts about our change in formation overall. So I'm going to move on now to one of our other midfield players and that is James McArthur who I'm going to give a 6 overall. Now I suppose his performance here was much like the one against Chelsea where he wasn't necessarily absolutely terrible in the game, wasn't necessarily great so I suppose you could say an average performance overall but the main reason I've given him six is just because he was still efficient in midfield but he's very quiet about it so the fact that he just went about his business done what he had to do in midfield that's the main reason why I was quite impressed with his performance now albeit it weren't necessarily the best performance from him and that's why he's got a six as opposed to a seven of his midfield counterparts but nevertheless the fact that he was just fairly efficient done his job that was obviously great to see and that's something I really like to see from players you know if they're not going to play really really well I'd rather than just be consistently consistently average give their all for the team and just be efficient at their job so I don't expect spectacular things from MacArthur but if he can just do the basics right be very efficient in his role that's something which really you would like to see and to be honest for me looking back at the game he didn't really stand out here but the fact that his job was still quite important in the team what he done the work he done in the midfield was still really important and going back to our, you know, the, the clean sheet we got, albeit McCarth was playing slightly more advanced than some of his other midfield counterparts, the fact that he still made a few challenges, you know, I'm looking back at the game, made, still made a few challenges was, of course, him giving his contribution defensively. So the fact that he was efficient both defensively and offensively in the game was, of course, great to see. But I suppose the only negative of his performance, really, is just that terrible dive he made inside the box. Very poor attempt at trying to actually win a penalty. You could argue, yes, the player, he still he still got the ball and still made a challenge, but there's no need for McCarthy to actually go down it easily. So really, for me, you know, not really ideal that he's diving, and that's really the reason why I've given him a 6 as opposed to a 7, because because of how efficiently he'd done his job, I probably could give him a 7, but the fact that he just made that terrible dive, it's a bit silly. He's, a, he's an experienced player, so he should really know better than that, and of course, that's not great to see. And, you know, you look back at the last sort of few weeks or so, that's the second time he's been caught doing it in the last sort of few games, so maybe that's something the management or he just needs to reflect on just to make sure he doesn't do it because we know he's not a cheater he's a good player but it's just a bit silly given his experience that he makes these silly dives inside the box now yes there were still contacts in there but you know it's too soft a bit silly to go down and you know you have people moaning about Zaha's getting the penalty which of course was 100% a penalty but then no one's talking about MacArthur so I really think it's sort of double standards there so really for me you know, yes, he was very good in midfield, but obviously that sort of dive really just put a, put a down on what was a fairly competent performance from him. But like I've said already, aside from that, I think he looked like the MacArthur sort of of last season, not necessarily in all aspects of his game, but in other parts of his game, like his sort of getting into an advanced position, so his positioning and his defensive work, he looked like the MacArthur of last season, which of course is a positive in itself. And I mainly do think the reason for that is because of Kiate just freeing him up to actually make his runs forward. So the fact that Kiate and Milivojevic were actually just covering that defensive work, even though they were going forward as well, but the fact that they covered it mainly allowed MacArthur to go slightly further forward. And because he was playing more narrow as opposed to out wide where he's played this season, that also seemed to play into his hands and actually seemed to improve his performance. So overall, change of formation seemed to help him. Obviously, he overall, I do think the reason I've given him a six is just because he was quietly efficient about his job, went about and done his work, both defensively and offensively in the midfield. But of course, that really poor dive, which he should know better from, but the fact that he made that dive really put a down on what would have been a good performance from him. So do comment below with your thoughts, you know, whether you do think it was a dive, whether you just think it was a good, it was a challenge, 
that wasn't worth a penalty from from the defender. Whatever you think, do comment that below. And obviously do comment below as well what you think about his performance. And whether you do think someone like Max Meyer maybe should come in to the midfield for the next game. Because certainly we were lacking, especially in that first half. Albeit we were very good offensively. We were just lacking that little bit of a spark, that little bit of creativity. Which possibly Meyer could have gave, gave us. But overall, James McArthur, I do think the 6 is a fair result. So I'm going to move on now to our star man playing on the right, and that is Andros Townsend, who I am going to give a 7 overall. Now obviously, he's had a fantastic month for Palace in the fact that during December, obviously scored 2-1 the goals. I think he got two assists as well, played almost every minute, bar I think three minutes or whatever it was, uh, against I think it was Leicester. So the fact that he's playing so well, obviously played into our hands in the fact that he's in very good form coming into this game against Wolves. And luckily for us, he carried it on with what was once again another good performance and certainly does deserve the 7 I've given him. Now, the one thing I really liked about his performance here against Wolves, and this is something once again you come to expect from him, it's just the fact that he worked hard for the team. So even though he's been playing the majority of this season down the middle, this game, once again, because of our change of formation, he obviously was playing in his more natural position, obviously where he wants to play out wide, and that seemed to improve his performance even more because, yes, he's been great the, uh, in December, but the fact that he was able to carry into the first game of 2018 with another good performance, carrying on that form was, of course, great to see. Now, one of the things I liked about the fact that he, or the one of the thing that came off the, the fact that he was working hard is the fact that he found himself in a number of good positions throughout the whole game. So, obviously, during December, like I said already, his attacking contribution was fantastic in the fact that he got two goals to assist and the fact that he was always running at players always causing problems to the opposition and that was obviously something good to see throughout the last month or so so the fact that he was able to still provide that threat against a wolf side who are very solid defensively normally so the fact that he was still able to provide that threat was of course great to see and the majority of his threat did come from deliveries into the box so because he was moved to his more natural position out wide rather than him trying to cut inside albeit he'd done it a few times Rather than him trying to do that now, because he's not the striker, because he's been moved back out wide, he was actually looking to get the deliveries into the box, which he obviously done on a few occasions. So that little change of formation not only was helping our midfield, but actually was also helping our attackers as well, because they were playing in their more natural wide positions. And certainly, he could have done better on a few chances that he had on... Um, or the, he could have done better with a few sort of sights he had for on goal, but nevertheless, that didn't really put a down on what was a very good sort of hard-working offensive performance from him. And of course, once again, even though he wasn't necessarily as involved defensively as he was uh, against Chelsea, the fact that he was still obviously helping wan was of course great to see as well. Now, in terms of um, his contribution or in terms of his performance over the last sort of few weeks, he looks like the leader in the side. So whilst sort of Wilfred Zaha has been our talisman, in recent weeks and certainly the beginning of the season he was obviously a talisman you know scoring three goals but you look back to the last sort of month or so and actually Townsend has become that figure inside mainly because of just his leadership and just how he's the biggest threat for Palace so it's sort of gone full circle in the fact that Zaha was the main man and Townsend was just sort of playing off him but now Zaha even though he had a better performance here against Wolves he wasn't back to his best and you've got someone like Townsend actually stepping up to the plate being that leader in the side and actually being that biggest threat for Palace. So the fact that he's now took that upon himself to actually, whilst he's in good form, you know, be that biggest attacking threat for Palace, that was of course great to see. Now in terms of all of our good attacking play throughout the game, obviously Zaha, Ayu obviously had all good offensive performances, but actually I do think Andros Townsend in particular, and I suppose it was mainly him, he was the centre of all of our good play that the side produced. So obviously Wolves are normally, you know, absolutely brilliant. They, you know, look at their Tottenham game where they obviously 1-0 down, going on to win it 3-1 they were fantastic offensively so the fact that we were able to play as well as we did offensively with someone like Townsend actually being the architect of most of our good play the fact that we were able to do that and break down the Wolves side albeit they were still relatively good defensively the fact that we were able to do that was mainly down to Andrew Townsend and how well he was attacking throughout the game now one of the things I did like about his performances obviously going back to that point I made about the change of formation he actually seemed to sort of relish drifting between the forward and the winger duties so obviously he's been playing mainly as a forward this season so of course it's going to take him a few games or so to get used to this change of formation back to a 4-3-3 but the fact that he has that ability now to actually play as a forward and play as a winger seemed to really play into his hands because he was able to drift quite freely between the two different roles so when someone like Ayu is bringing the ball up from deep you know Townsend could actually come inside and offer that option or even someone like Zaha even though he was primarily 
playing on the left, he could also drift inside as well. So the fact that he was able to drift between these two duties, as well as linking up with both wan and Ayu as well, was of course great to see. But I do think overall, uh, you know, Andrew Townsend had a fantastic offensive performance, you know, always looking to cause problems for the Wolves defence, working hard, getting into good positions, whilst also putting very good deliveries into the box. And like I've said already, you know, last sort of few months or month or so, you know, Wilfred Zaha hasn't necessarily been as good as he has been in previous seasons. So the fact that Andros Townsend has stepped up, being that leader on the side to be our biggest attacking threat was of course great to see. So once again, another fantastic attacking performance from him. And you know, as I'm recording this a day after the match, they've obviously just announced the December Player of the Month. Obviously Andros Townsend won it with about, four, I think it was 44% of the vote. So congratulations to him on winning that. And I certainly did vote for him. So of course, I do think personally he did fully deserve it. Because given the fact that he scored 2-1 the goals, and obviously got two assists, played every minute bar three, and there was loads of other stats as well that he, you know, in terms of his contribution. So the fact that he had such a good month was, of course, great to see. So I'm now going to move on to the left-hand side of our front three, and that is, of course, Wilfred Zaha, who I'm going to give a seven overall. Now, before I go on to talk about his performance here against Wolves, I might as well say, much like what I've said with quite a lot of players in the fact that just sort of going over their last sort of few games or so, Zaha's been one of these players who, yes, he's still been some sort of a threat in games recently, but he hasn't necessarily had that sort of impact and that sort of talisman sort of mentality that he's had in recent games. So the fact that he's able to come into this game here against Wolves, given, yes, obviously he's playing a different position, which, of course, is his more natural one, but the fact that he was able to come into this game, even though he, off the back of some relatively bad form by his standards, the fact that he was able to do that and perform so well, much like Andros Townsend in terms of just being that attacking threat, was of course great to see. Now obviously his performance was all great and that, but one of the reasons I think he did perform so well, especially towards the end of the game where he won that penalty, is just because of the amount of stick he was getting from the uh, the Wolves fans. Now a few of them have come out on YouTube, you know, doing their post-match reviews and going, actually Zaha's been one of the best players we've seen so far this season at Molyneux, and of course it's great to see, you know, or it's great to see actually opposition fans actually giving your players credit, and certainly for them, looking at the game, they're like, well, there's no need to boo him, because actually, he's just doing what he always does, and he's obviously troubling our defence, so they're obviously booing him to try and get in his head, and it's obviously quite ridiculous, because he, he hasn't really done anything to them, he was sort of the pantomime villain, but even though he was boo uh, being booed, it didn't seem to affect his performance, which it seems to have done previously this season, so the fact that he didn't was, didn't really affect it here was of course great to see and in terms of you know two plays he actually done really well against defensively I think Bennett and Cody in particular the fact that Zaha, Zaha was getting booed seemed to spur him on and in terms of actually getting in behind looking to get crosses in dribbling past players I think Bennett and Cody were two players in particular who obviously did suffer from the fact that Wilf seemed to be back to his best now obviously much like mo many teams have done this season obviously Zaha's very closely marked and because Wolves defended so well it was really expected in the fact that they would deal with his threat. But even though he didn't necessarily get much in his own way, the fact that he was still um, being involved in our offensive work by actually creating space, by actually getting two or three defenders to actually mark him. So even though he wasn't necessarily directly involved in all of our attacks, his actual contribution by actually dragging uh, defenders out wide allowed a lot more space for people like Ayu and Townsend. So even though he hasn't necessarily got anything to see for it uh, or, or to show from it in terms of an assist or a goal, he was still proven to be an attacking option or that attacking uh, threat by actually causing problems for that back four and actually, you know, dragging him out of position. So the fact that he was able to do that was, of course, great to see. And obviously, I've talked about Townsend already in terms of he was so good going forward. One of the reasons for that is because Zaha created the space. And in terms of Ayu in particular, you know, he's obviously had a pretty bad start to his Palace career. So the fact that he played as well as he did was one of the reasons why Ayu played so well is because of Zaha actually playing off of him as well. But the fact that he was dragging, uh, you know, players wide and actually creating that space in behind. Now, obviously, the final point here is the penalty. You know, the fact that Zaha won the penalty was, of course, great to see. And albeit it doesn't officially count as an assist, I'm going to give it to him as an assist because he obviously made that fantastic marauding run down that right, uh, that left hand flank, got fouled in the box, rightly so, it's a penalty, can't really argue with that, and of course Luca dispatches it. So even though he doesn't necessarily get a, an, a, uh, an assist officially, I still think, you know, he's still got something to show from the game in the fact that he obviously got tackled for uh, for that penalty. So I do think overall a 7 is a fair result, and I suppose it goes back to what I said with Andros Townsend, you know, like he all, or I say like he always is, this season he hasn't always been that great offensively, but like he normally is in terms of being our talisman, being one of our biggest attacking threats, him alongside Townsend back in their sort of 
more natural positions that seemed to uh, affect both of their performances seemed to improve both of them so the fact that Zaha was able to put the last sort of few games or so behind him in the fact that he's been playing at striker the fact that he moved back to his natural position and the fact that that seemed to improve his performance tenfold was of course great to see so in terms of the game overall I do think a seven is a fair result even though he's being closely marked he was still able to be a threat and the fact that he actually got the better of Bennett and Cody on quite a few occasions albeit they defended relatively well for the most part was of course great to see so I do think overall Wilfred Zaha a much improved performance in recent weeks and certainly the fact that he won the penalty is obviously an improvement in the fact that he got an assist from the game so we're going to move on now to our final player and that is Jordan Ayew who I am going to give a 7 overall now he's a player who you know I've talked about quite a lot this season in the fact that he hasn't been good enough been missing chances and even though he's been working hard for the team and in terms of that in terms of working hard you'll probably give him a 7 out of 10 but in terms of his actual attacking presence in terms of scoring goals getting assists he hasn't been that great so in terms of his you know work rate you'll probably give him a 7 out of 10 for the season but then you're looking at his other side of the game in terms of you know attacking chances inside the box you're probably going to give him a four or a three so the fact that he came into this game here against walls where many didn't expect him to start he was brought back into the side in the place of Meyer. the fact that he got brought into the side with all of the fans sort of criticizing it the fact that he performed so well and worked hard up top and the fact that he made a number of good runs down the middle as a striker was of course great to see now i'm going to put my hands up and say i obviously went on twitter before the game and said why are we playing Jordan I when we've got someone like Connor Wickham or someone like Max Meyer on the bench but arguably this change of formation obviously was a tactical thing because obviously Wolves play a slightly different system to say Chelsea do so obviously we changed the system in that respect and obviously are you playing as a striker albeit that's maybe not his best position but that him coming back to this back into the side actually allowed us to move to our new formation in that 4-3-3 and whilst that improved both Townsend and Zaha's performance bringing Ayu back into the side with the likes of Townsend and Zaha actually providing him in the first place that seemed to improve his performance as well but like I've said already lots of criticism of him before the game when he was brought into the side but the fact that he proved me wrong proved all the other fans wrong by actually putting in a very good offensive display where he was obviously working hard like he normally does chasing every ball as well as making a number of good runs was of course great to see now of course this is all great and this has really been a theme of his performances this season in the fact that he works hard doesn't get anything for show for it but this was the game where he finally got his reward for these good performances for him working hard and that was obviously his first goal for the club about seven minutes from time and of course you know at that point it was nil nil it was going to take one goal to obviously steal the game obviously we went on to get a second but at that point it was like whoever scores next or whoever scores first will win this game so the fact that he got the goal was obviously great to see and obviously was quite crucial in us in terms of us getting that priceless three points now in terms of the goal itself I, i've talked quite a lot in terms of the build-up so vanana and zaha passing the ball around in the edge of the area zaha tries to get past three players can't so offloads the ball to vanana he's put a lovely chip pass into iu and of course iu scores now in terms of the goal there was two key moments in terms of iu's technique which are really impressive the first touch to actually control the ball get it almost dead and stop the spin of it that was the first thing which was great and obviously the actual ability to actually put it onto his other foot and rifle it past Patricio so then the goal or the technique for the goal was obviously great to see but then two parts of it in particular you know the touch and the ability to well the, the shooting ability to get it away from the goalkeeper into that far corner was the thing that was really impressive so even though he's come up for quite a lot of criticism this season in the fact that he hasn't scored hasn't necessarily been that great it was finally great to see him given the amount of abuse he was getting on twitter especially before the game it was finally nice to see him actually come out of the end of that really bad run of form and actually you know perform as well as he did so i do think overall a very good performance from him and in terms of you know it being nil nil it was he was really important to us actually getting that three points and certainly getting getting in front in the game to actually go on to get that second goal we did now much like what i said with the, the whole front three in terms of zaha and townsend obviously the formation seemed to suit his strengths much much better and one of the main reasons for that is in is that in a 4-4-2 because you're quite limited because the, the midfield are playing quite narrow it basically means you've got no support from out wide which basically means your two strikers are, are relying from marauding ones forward from the midfield so if you haven't got that connection between the midfield and the attack they're not really going to be playing well so the fact that we change to this formation which actually had wingers who were actually supplying Ayu seemed to improve his performance as well and because we were playing with a front three it means they can play slightly narrow and it meant that he had a lot better support as well so the fact that we were playing to all of our players strengths you know I talked about I talked about the midfield in terms of them moving around talk about the attackers actually playing in their natural positions out wide so actually this formation 
uh, suited the strengths of the whole side. But are you in particular, albeit he's not primarily a striker, you know, I, I'd say he's more of a winger. But the fact that we were able to play it, play to his strengths and play to other team, uh, other players' strengths was, of course, great to see as well. Now, yes, he's not a target man, so of course. It might not work putting balls into the box for him, but actually allowing players to actually create chances for him, you know, balls like from Zaha, like from Townsend, just allows him to, well, it allows us to get the better out of Bayou as well as getting the best out of these other players as well. Now, the main thing immediately for me that was most impressive, and, you know, it goes back to that point about him working hard, the fact that he was running up, the, running up all of the channels with the support as well, using his support, using the overlaps with other players, the fact that he was actually looking to run these channels, and basically... Even though he's put effort in, in in the last sort of few games, the yeah, the basically the games he's played this season, albeit people haven't necessarily appreciated it, the fact that he now got something to show from it, it was really impressive. And you know, this is probably his best game for Palace, not just because he scored the goal, but just how efficient he was in in that offensive role by actually running down the channels, getting the ball to you know Zaha Townsend. So the fact that he was not, it wasn't, it wasn't just the goal which was impressive about his performance. It was just his overall offensive play over the field. But overall, I do think Jordan Ayew does deserve a seven. You know, do comment below with your thoughts. You know, whether you, you do think we should bring in a, a striker in the January transfer window. Whether you do think we should stick with this formation and stick with Ayew playing as that striker in the 4-3-3. Or whether you do think maybe when Benteke comes back, he comes back in. But maybe Ayew could come off the bench and prove an impact there. But overall, I do think, you know, Jordan Ayew does deserve the seven I've given him. Finally got that goal that he richly deserved in terms of how good he was working hard up top, making these good runs. Runs. and obviously the finish itself was obviously excellent as well so hopefully this is the start of things to come and obviously there's been rumours about him possibly going back to Swansea so maybe this was sort of the kick up the backside he needed you know he finally got a goal and maybe this could be something which could stop him going back to Swansea so whatever it is whatever you think of it hopefully this could be the thing that really to kick on his season now so I'm going to move on now to the only sub we made in the game and that was Connor Wickham he came on for Jordan Ayew in the 87th minute not really going to give him a rating overall because he wasn't really given any time to make an impact. And considering we were 1-0 up at that point, it was basically a substitution. Maybe it could have been to conserve Ayew for the game against Grimsby. Maybe we want to, given the fact that he's now scored, we want to make sure he can maybe score a few against Grimsby to get confidence. Don't know what it was. Maybe it was probably just to conserve fitness and the fact that we just needed to... Um, get some fresh faces on and obviously run down the clock. Whatever it was, Connor Wickham came on. Not really any, enough time to make an impact, but he still put himself about. So just to go over a sort of a, a small summary of the game overall, you know, especially in the first half, I do think we were all over Wolves. And that's not to say that Wolves were particularly bad. It's just the fact that we were much better than them. And, you know, you look back at the first 20 minutes or so, and we had 70% possession, which really just goes to show how badly Wolves are playing. And how good we were playing. And although it let, sort of levelled out and evened out towards the end of the game. The, the fact still remains that Wolves have been a really great side this season. But we were just better than them on the day. And I do think you won't find any Wolves fan who will really disagree with that statement. And I do think by far we were the better team. Now one of the reasons I personally think that Wolves may, maybe were off the pace. Is just because they looked a bit tired. A bit lacklustre. Because they've played quite a, f quite a few games. As have all the Premier League sides. And obviously... Maybe I've seen someone suggest this. Maybe the reason we, we played as badly as we did against Chelsea so negatively was maybe just to conserve energy because we weren't pressing Chelsea. So if that was the case and the fact that we didn't push Chelsea, we didn't press them to make sure we could conserve energy for the Wolves game. If that was the case, then it was brilliant. It was a brilliant game plan because because we didn't waste our energy against Chelsea. It meant that we were full of energy and we were able to obviously pose a threat to that Wolves side. So if that was a tactical thing by not attacking Chelsea, then obviously it's paid off because obviously we were a lot better and we were able to obviously break down Wolves. Now, of course, going back to Ayu, he was obviously getting a lot of grief from fans before the game and, and Roy as well in the fact that he picked him to start. But the fact that he proved us wrong and the fact that he was able to silence his critics was, of course, great to see. And, you know, the fact that he'd done it with not necessarily a scrappy goal, I wouldn't have minded if it was a scrappy goal, but the fact that he'd done it with such a good goal in terms of the touch and the shot as well. The fact that he'd done that was of course great to see. Now in terms of him overall. Yes it was he was being a bit sort of underachieving hugely this season. But the fact that he's now got something um, which shows that his training is finally paying off. Is obviously great to see. And hopefully going forward this goal. Much like goals have for other players. Hopefully that can sort of kick on this season. Because I do think he's shown glimpses of being good. But actually his attacking play. His sort of role he plays as a striker hasn't been that great. So hopefully this can be the thing that really kicks on this season. And hopefully something which will finally show what's happening on the training pitch paying off. Now in terms of just the formation going back to Roy Hodgson. Obviously he tinkered with this formation and obviously with the personnel as well. You know bringing in Jordan Ayew. But at the end of the day 
it still allowed us to secure that vital win at a lackluster, lackluster wall. So, like I said already, whether the formation we played against Chelsea was done like that to preserve energy for Wolves, whatever it was, th that sort of little, little changes here and there seemed to help us. Obviously, the formation helped other players in terms of the 4-3-3. It was more fluid for both our midfielders and the attackers. Or whether it was just the fact that we weren't playing so negatively, which allowed us to go forward. Whatever it was, that sort of change in formation allowed us to you know, go away to Wolves, who've been one of the better teams in the Premier League this season, and obviously come away with a really good 2-0 result. But going back to the formation, just to talk about, you know, numbers again, it was really, both the 4-3-3 and 4-5-1, in the way we played it here against Wolves, albeit the 4-5-1 wasn't good against Chelsea, but this style, in terms of 4-3-3 when we're attacking, 4-5-1 when we're defending, that sort of fluid, uh, so, yeah, so I suppose that sort of fluid formation, which obviously saw us set up, really did seem to surprise Wolves in the fact that we normally play 4-4-2, so maybe that little change seemed to surprise them. And obviously, the fact that we we were pressing so high at the pitch and keeping possession well maybe that's something as well which you could uh, debate why we played so well in the game because normally we don't necessarily press that high up the pitch we just sit deep and absorb pressure so maybe that was something or one of the reasons why we went on to win the game in the fact that we were pressing high restricting wolves making it difficult for them as well as the fact that we kept possession very well and you know it goes back to what i said about the first 20 minutes or so the fact that we had 70 percent of the possession shows how well we started the game but also really sort of set the standard of what the rest of the game was going to be like in terms of us keeping possession well but overall a very good game for Palace in the fact that we've got a 2-0 win we're now you know I think six points above the relegation zone got a much better goal difference I think it's only minus seven so the fact that we're now starting to creep away from it as well as actually creeping above to the teams above us you know they're only a few points ahead now so the fact that we're now doing that is of course good to see and you know we've got a good you know a great game coming up in the cup against Grimsby on Saturday um, you know, obviously Grimsby are a lower league side, but it's going to be a great turnout. 5,000, I think, or 5,500 Grimsby fans coming. Mo I, I'm not sure about the Palace fans, how many are going to be there, but hopefully it'll be a good atmosphere. And it's really a great chance to get a result, hopefully carry on the form we've got. And actually, it'll be really good to actually see some of our fringe players get a go. You know, you likes of Reed Ward, you likes of Sonny Kai Kai. Even someone like Conor Wickham, who's obviously coming back in, back into the side, hopefully we can give them a run out against Grimsby, and hopefully they can sort of, you know, show something which maybe Roy Hodgson should look at it and go, maybe they should be getting into the first team. But like I've said already, really good game against Grimsby coming up. Going to be a great atmosphere, and hopefully loads of players get a chance. But obviously, after that, the week after that, we've got a really important game against Watford. Obviously, Watford are... You know, they've started the season really well. They've been hot and cold recently, but they're obviously still nevertheless a good team. So hopefully going to Watford in a week's time, hopefully we can put in another good performance like we did against Wolves. Because in terms of ability and in terms of how the seasons went, I suppose Wolves and Watford are quite similar in the fact that they're quite high up in the league. So maybe, or I suppose if we put in a good performance or as good as a performance we did against Wolves with our players back to fully, uh, fully fit, considering all of this sort of, the, the Christmas fixtures being so tightly together so hopefully that can really pay off and we can have a really good performance against Watford because certainly it's going to be a hard game but hopefully we'll come out with the uh, a point I'll be happy with but maybe the three points as well So I'm now going to move on to my Man of the Match award, but before I do that, I give you my Man of the Match, and why I've won the biggest influence in the game, I'm now going to give you the four nominations I'll put forward for the award. Now after a performance which was considerably better than the one against Chelsea at the weekend, there were actually quite a number of players who I could have picked for the award, and obviously the four players I've gone with is just for a, a multitude of different things, you know, I've gone for players who've done really well defensively, players who've obviously done their shift in midfield, and of course I've gone for a forward player as well, so I've gone for a mix of players, and one of the reasons for that is just because of the whole team performance was a lot better than the games recently, and actually, considering how good Wolves have been this season, it was a very professional performance in the fact that how well we were able to deal with them, and the the fact that we got two goals and kept the clean sheet as well so all different things all put together I could have really picked anyone from the side but I do think you know the players I've picked really do reflect the the good parts of our game but the all the different aspects of the good parts of our play so the four players I've gone with are Mamadou Sako, Luka Milivojevic, Cheku Kiate and Jordan Ayew now in terms of Sako obviously I can first of all talk about the clean sheet obviously he defended so well against Wolves and of course rightly so got a clean sheet obviously taking us to 8 for 8 for the season so of course that's a great stat in the fact that we've got the, I think it's the same amount of clean sheets as Man City which really just puts into perspective 
how good our defensive players are. But actually, this game here, you know, moving aside from his how good he's been this season, the fact that he was very steady at the back for Palace, the fact that he kept a calm head, and the fact that he just dealt so well with the, you know, with the attacks. Uh, from Wolves the fact that he was able to do that and just be that calming presence was of course great to see as well and that sort of or well, that sort of seemed to influence other players around him so the fact that he played so well and was so calm seemed to make players around him even better so of course when you're influ influencing players as much as that that's of course great to see as well and the fact that because he was playing calm he took control of lots of situations dealt with Wolves threat as well as just doing what he normally does you know winning headers making interceptions making blocks so the fact that he just overall had a very solid performance but was able to combine that with the fact that he was so calming at the back is the thing that really did impress me now in terms of Milivojevic you know it was a, a captain's performance, I suppose you could say, in the fact that he marshalled the team very well. But in particular, he actually marshalled the midfield really well. So in terms of that midfield battle, having control uh, of the centre of the field, I think we've done relatively well in that respect. And I do think Luca was quite key to that. And the main thing I liked about him is the fact that, yes, he'd done this defensive work. That was all fine, you know, took one for the team team at one point but aside from that I do think he actually was involved in quite a lot of our good moves going forward so the fact that he was able to combine a very good captain's defensive performance by you know making in tackles making it difficult for Wolves by providing that protection in front of the back four the fact that he combined that with that ability going forward with that ability to actually ping the ball forward that was obviously great to see as well and particularly in that first half where we started the game so well he was of course one of our most crucial players on that and the fact that under that pressure you know last minute uh, penalty the fact that he was able to put the penalty home so powerfully to get it and obviously get the height to get it above Rui Patricio the fact that he was able to top off what was a very good midfield both defensively and offensively performance the fact that he was able to top that off with a penalty was of course great to see now Chiku Kase put in a very a good shift in midfield and much like Luca done both great work defensively and offensively and you know this is something we've come to expect from him and you know he's certainly going to be up here if he carries this on for the rest of the season he's going to be up here nearly every week because he is you know always does puts in a shift and always does well in the midfield but the thing I liked about his performance mostly is the fact that because we were playing this new formation obviously it meant that he was playing slightly more defensive than he has done recently but that basically because he was doing that so efficiently it allowed other players around him to go further forward so the fact that he, he that little change in formation seemed to improve his performance defensively and the fact that he was involved a lot more and the fact that he allowed other players to go forward as well was of course great to see and that's not to say he didn't get forward himself because much like Luca, he was looking to get involved going forward and certainly he was involved in quite a few good moments going forward particularly in that first half because he was looking to get forward in support of the attack as well so not only was he doing his defensive work which allowed other players around him to go further forward but also he was actually providing that attacking threat as well going forward so looking at our first three players you know you've got the defensive work of all three of them and then obviously in terms of attacking work you've got obviously both Milivojevic and Kiati as well now the final player is obviously Jordan Ayew who scored his first goal for the club and you know obviously he's come up for quite a lot of criticism but the fact that he proved us all wrong put in such a good performance was of course great to see now the mo the thing obviously i could talk about the goal that was a great finish in terms of the touch and obviously the shot as well so of course that's one of the reasons he's on the shortlist but the main reason for me is just because of how hard he worked the fact that he was chasing down every ball the fact that he was putting pressure on the back four the fact that he was making some good runs as well so it wasn't just putting pressure on the back four but actually it was actually getting into good positions trying to get in behind working hard so the fact that he was able to combine getting that goal and well I suppose the fact that he was able to get a reward for his good performance with the goal was of course great to see so when you combine a good performance in terms of just your overall attacking play with the fact that you got a goal for show for it obviously that's why he's on the short list and you know in terms of that point in the game it was whoever scored that goal or whoever scored the first goal was going to win that game so the fact that we got it right towards the end of the game and we were still able to hold on as well was of course great to see now in terms of these players you know already like i've said Sako, milivojevic karte i all of them do deserve to get the award and certainly you're looking at their performances here and you could say actually there may be other players who could have been on the shortlist so it was pretty hard to narrow it down to four considering how good the performance was but for me personally considering we've kept a clean sheet and because of how well we've done defensively, you know, restricting uh, Wolves. I'm going to give it to Mamadou Sako. So congratulations, Mamadou. Uh, you don't get a trophy or certificate, but you do get my sincere congratulations on what was yet another solid defensive performance from you. And the main reason I've given it to him is just mainly because of the clean sheet. You know, if it wasn't for Sako making the sheer amount of interceptions and blocks he made, and the fact that he had that calming presence, we probably wouldn't have won the game. So because of him in particular, 
And that's that's why I think we won the game. And certainly for me, I do think he does, does deserve the award. But obviously mentions go to Milivojevic, Kiatu and I. Because I do think they were all just as good. I just think because of how big that contribution was from Sacco to actually get that clean sheet. That's the main, re that's the main reason he impressed me. And certainly why I've nominated him for this week's Man of the Match award. So now you've heard my match report, player rankings of my Man of the Match. That concludes this week's podcast. Now I've got interviews with Roy Hodgson, Jordan Ayew and Luka Milivojevic following the game. Jordan, congratulations on your goal today. You must be pleased with your performance. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pleased. Um, pleased for me, pleased for my family and pleased for, my, for their fans and for my, my fans in Ghana. Um, I have to thank the coach for giving me this opportunity. So, so I was waiting for this moment and this moment has come. So I'm starting... New year, new things, and it's positive, and three points, so it's good. Are you starting to feel in? Were you starting to feel any pressure about getting getting a goal for the club? No, not at all. I, I knew that it would, it would come because I have the support from everyone in the in the club, so I didn't have any I didn't really have any pressure. And the most important thing is for the team to win and to have three points. That was my main focus. You've got so much energy on the pitch. You're always closing players down. Is that an important part of your game to be that first line of defence for the team? Well, um, it's important. It's important. But like I said, it's also important important to be to be opportunist and to be scoring goals and to create and make things happen. So it's things that I try to do, and luckily today I was successful. So I thank God and I'll keep on working hard. It's been a good night. Um, with the league table, other teams below uh, not catching up. We're now at that point where we're just in touch with those teams above. How much are you looking at the league table? Yeah, it's good, it's good. It's good. We just focus on ourselves and keep on getting points and that's it. And finally, we've got Grimsby on Saturday in the FA Cup. How, how good would a cup run be? It's a good, it's a good thing. It's a game, it's an important game, qualification, so we have to do the job. Okay, a great away performance today. You must be pleased with the team's performance. Very pleased. Very pleased. Uh, massive three points for us, for us. We deserve. I think today we played a really good game. Uh, you know, we create a lot of chances and in the end we deserve the points. Yeah, we talked after the last game about needing to take those chances. Jordan I with a great finish today. Yeah, great finish. Uh, he finds himself in good position uh, after second phase and, um, you know, that goal gave us more confidence, uh, more energy in the end. Uh, penalty on Wilfred and I'm covered to goal. We win 2-1 and 2-0 uh, oh, and I'm so happy and pleased, of course. Yeah, another, another penalty for you. It's quite a nice combination, that, when Wilf gets the ball out on the left. You know there's a, a chance you're going to have a penalty. You know, I must say thanks to Wilf because many penalties uh, which I scored was when he was fouled. Uh, you know, it's... It's so hard to, to catch him. He has uh, very uh, quick feet and we are happy to have him in the team. And, you know, these three points is very big for us because now we have a little bit break after many games in a short period of time. And now we are going to rest a little bit for Grimsby and then we have more time for Watford. Yeah, the manager said it was a, it's a team performance defensively. How much work is put in on the training ground of organising the whole team defensively? You know what? We had a lot of games in this month, eight games, and there is not a lot of time to, uh, to work a lot on the shape because we work from the beginning of the season. Uh, the priority was to recover players, to, to, to try to, to keep us fresh. And I think today... We look very good defensively, offensively we were very dangerous and as I said, really good team performance and we deserve these three points. A really good away performance today, you must be delighted with your team. I am, I'm delighted with the team in every aspect really. I thought our discipline was tremendous, I thought our organisation was good, the work rate of course as usual and I thought the way we kept the ball and you know, we're, we're, we're so calm in possession and so many opportunities really that we created in, in, in the final third, seeing Wilf back to his best. All of those things give me great hope for the future. And a goal for Jordan Iowa, that would be great for his confidence. It will, and it was a very well taken goal too. But his whole performance I thought was very good today. I mean, he, 
you know, his work rate's been good anyway in all the games he's played. But today I thought the, he held the ball up for us on occasions. He was stretching their defence out with his runs before before the goal. He'd had a couple of very, very good runs. And it's just a, a fitting reward, I think, for him that he, he scored that goal, which we thought was going to be the winning goal. As it turned out, we've produced a bit of his magic in the box and their tired legs, I think, were too much was too much for them at that stage of the game. And we could increase the score. And defensively, it's yet, yet another clean sheet. You must have a lot of confidence in your defence. Yeah, I've got a lot of confidence in the team defence. I mean, obviously the back four have been good, but they've been helped a lot by what the work the midfield players do and the work the, the front players do. And if we're going to keep clean sheets, it won't be just because we uh, have you know those four outstanding individuals and a goalkeeper. It'll be because we continue to work you know from the front with our defending and. You know, I think in, at half time, I don't know they'd even really had a, a serious attempt at goal. There was a couple in the early part of the second half where we made a, a couple of technical errors and let them in. But overall, I think the corner kick count alone and the possession count alone will show how dominant we were and how much we deserved to win the game. And, you know, their manager after the game, you know, uh, admitted that. And finally, it's been a busy schedule recently. Can we expect a few changes on Saturday for Grimsby? Yeah, I think we can, but I mean, it's important still that we, you know, we don't have such enormous options in the in the front positions. Uh, you know, we, we we're still waiting on Ben Teke returning, so the front players we have, um, they need to be pressed into service more often. But certainly the back players, uh, I think that will be where I can happily make changes. We've got excellent players who can go in the back line who've had to wait there, wait for their opportunity because the back four has played so well during these games, but people like Scott Dan and Joel Ward and Martin Kelly, these guys really, they, they deserve a look in there on the bench every week. It's about time they've got a chance to show what they can do. But there'll be a bit of pressure on them because we need to win that game. And uh, sitting on the bench tonight and seeing this lot do so well, they'll be hopefully chumping at the bit to get out there and show I'm just as good. So there you have it. Now you've heard what Roy Hodgson, Jordan Ayew and Luka Milivojevic had to say after the game. That concludes this week's podcast for the game against Wolves. But make sure to come back next week for my post-match review of the game against Grimsby in the FA Cup. So thanks for listening and remember to up the palace. Up the palace.